I'm sorry, it's just, it's incredulous to me that I have to be standing here defending my humanity. Censoring it, banning it, telling schools they can't say gay or can't say trans as part of instruction means that we are slowly being erased. And I will not stand by and do nothing while that happens, members. With a recent Gallup poll revealing more adults than ever before identifying as LGBTQ, the level of retrenchment we're seeing from lawmakers pushing homophobic legislation is disappointing, but not at all surprising. The leaders of Florida and Texas are taking aim at LGBTQ plus kids by supporting policy that would criminalize them simply for existing. And plenty of other states are signaling they want to follow suit. So what will the future of equality look like for Generation Z? Joining me now, Rashad Robinson, president at Color of Change. Rashad, so great to see you. Thank you for coming back to the Sunday show. How do you make sense of such encouraging data about the numbers not identifying uh, as, as something other than heterosexual in the face of rampant Republican attacks to roll back hard-fought rights? Well, this is oftentimes, Jonathan, how it all works out, right? That as social progress happens for any group, particularly groups that have been oppressed, um, we see the backlash and we see the pushback. And so if we look at the numbers of the sort of rising numbers of, of LGBT young people, um, we, we can almost look at sort of how that then is impacting this backlash, this fear of adults, this fear from conservative forces and the right wing, these retrenched forces working to sort of push back and stifle this progress. And we see it across so many different issues. So I think what we all have to think about is not whether or not the numbers of LGBT folks or people identifying as something other than straight um, is going up, but how are the numbers of people willing to fight for social yeah. change, willing to stand up and make sure their voices are heard, not just people who identify as LGBT, but people who identify across the spectrum, not just the number of people who identify with us, but the number of people who are willing to fight with us and fight for the type of social change and across the intersection of experiences, recognizing mm -hmm. that in order for um, LGBT Americans to achieve all the social progress we deserve, we need to make sure that that progress um, is also extended to people of all backgrounds. Mm -hmm. you, you know, R Rashad, my, my friend on Twitter, Josh Kruger, um, tweeted something that I, I want to get your reaction to. One of the things he says is, I've been struck by the lack of coming out stories by Generation Z. They're never in. Which is, I mean, yeah, it's true. They're never in. So how do you think that will impact um, visibility, because when, and I think I'm older, I, th I know I'm older than you, um, the act of coming out was a political statement. So yes. now that it's less of a political statement, will the impact be less? Well, I think the politics are changing. I remember, I remember 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when I was at GLAAD, and we would have like these, you know, breakfast in the mornings when new staff would start and we'd oftentimes ask people their coming out stories and turn and towards the end of my time before I went to color of change people didn't have coming out stories the same way and that's you know over a decade ago so this has absolutely been changing and so that I think is really important that we can't mistake presence for power and this does mm -hmm. get back to power, how we are building political power, the type of power that absolutely changes the rules. And so it, I think it's absolutely very different for me as a black man in America than it was for my grandfather, than it was for my great grandparents. That mm -hmm. It's absolutely different. That just means that along the way, we have to continue to feed and engage a base of people to educate, to do the work, to help people understand where the fight still is needed, where we have to lean in together, where we have to build power, and who we have to hold accountable. All of that has to be part of the identity. When coming out was such a radical political act, and as it's become more and more normal, what we can't lose as part of that sort of process is a deep understanding that the rules are not fair, and that in order to actually build power, in order to actually leverage power, we have to do the work to change the rules. And I fundamentally believe that when oppressed people win, when oppressed people across 
all sort of social backgrounds when their victories add up to more social change for all of us. And that the forces that are oftentimes holding back LGBT Americans are the same ones trying to ban Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks from our schools, are the same people that did not want uh, girls to learn math, that do not want evolution taught in our schools. And we have to do the work to both expose those forces and build a much broader and stronger base of people of all backgrounds to fight for a better tomorrow. See, you, Rashad, you're another reason why I should get myself a church organ for when people start preaching, because um, <laughs> that was a sermon that I think everyone needed to hear. Rashad Robinson, president of Color of Change, thank you for coming back to The Sunday Show.